After May 2nd of last year, protesters took to the streets and to the steps of the Supreme Court to protest a decision that had not technically been made yet. But the whole country already had access to every word of it in print. A draft opinion in Dobbs versus Jackson Women's Health overturning Roe v. Wade had been leaked to and published by Politico. Emotions were high and people were on edge, including the justices of the Supreme Court themselves. Chief Justice John Roberts called the leak a, quote, betrayal of the confidences of the court and tasked the marshal of the court with investigating it. Today, the court announced that the marshal's investigation is essentially over, and they still do not know who did it. The court released this statement after months of diligent analysis of forensic evidence and interviews of almost 100 employees. The marshal's team determined that no further investigation was warranted with respect to many of the 82 employees who had access to electronic or hard copies of the draft opinion. The marshal said her team conducted 126 formal interviews of 97 employees and they all denied leaking the draft. While they determined that the court's IT systems were likely not breached, the marshal said that working from home during the pandemic and existing gaps in the court's security policies, quote, created an environment where it was too easy to remove sensitive information from the building and the court's IT networks, increasing the risk of both deliberate and accidental disclosures of court sensitive information. Although they know have no suspect, the marshal's team promises to follow any new information wherever it leads. Investigators continue to review and process some electronic data that has been collected and a few other inquiries remain pending. To the extent that additional investigation yields new evidence or leads, the investigators will pursue them. Apparently, for good measure, the court asked former Bush administration Homeland Security Secretary Michael Chertoff to conduct a review of the investigation. Chertoff found that it was conducted thoroughly and agreed, quote, at this time, I cannot identify any additional useful investigative measures. I mean, I can. I mean, from what we can glean, the investigators do not appear, we think, to have talked to the justices themselves or to their spouses, and they did not check their electronic communications. So we very much still have a whodunit on our hands and a court that seems to have reached a breaking point that's been catalyzed by this leak. Joining us now is Melissa Murray, professor at New York University School of Law, co-host of the legal podcast Strict, Strict Scrutiny and an MSNBC legal analyst. Melissa, the last time we talked, yes. I mean, it's ju it's like, it's juicy. What happened? But also, how is this the conclusion of the investigation? Well, I mean, it began with a bang and it's ended with a whimper. whimper. Um, this is truly a whimper. And so let's first start. The whole idea of having the marshal service investigate this league is by itself eyebrow raising. The marshal service is part of the court but it really is there to provide physical security to the justices. It's not like the FBI with a broad investigative remit. So it's unusual that this court, the highest court in the land, with all of the resources of the American government at its disposal, chose to investigate this leak using an arm of the court that probably isn't equipped to do this. And you see in the report how they were ill-equipped. Like they had to consult external um, sources for help with some of the forensic issues. So it's, it's not clear that this was the best use of the marshal's time, and maybe the investigation might have been best done by some other body. Maybe, you think? It's almost like they didn't want to get to the bottom of it. I mean, who knows? But it is an interesting way to wind all of this up, especially at a time where the court is experiencing its lowest approval ratings among the public in years. So, you know, this is a court where much of the public believes that its work is animated by politics and not law, and here was an opportunity to really investigate and get to the bottom of this and to be transparent with the American public. And instead, we've got more opacity here. We don't know if the justices were interviewed. We don't know anything. Um, we do know that some of those interviews uh, were asked to sign affidavits saying that they had not disclosed the information, that they hadn't been the source of the leak, but then they later had to come back and annotate their affidavits because they realized they had actually discussed the decision and the vote count with their spouses and partners. And so you wonder, was that widespread? And were other people discussing this with their spouses and partners? And why don't we know that? Well, but also, okay, I mean, maybe it was a hard... Oh, I forgot. We had two glasses of wine. We were about to watch Game of Thrones. And I just sort of, like, you know, forward her the attachment of the Dobbs opinion. I, I, this is the first time, well, it's the second time, right? It's the second time a major opinion like this has leaked ahead of the final ruling. And 
it seems to me not coincidental that both of these opinions are ones that are highly controversial, that curb, uh, well, that are, that are not favorable to liberals, progressive Democrats. The first one was apparently leaked by Samuel Alito, the Hobby Lobby decision, and yet <laughs> Samuel Alito, from what we understand, has not been interviewed in all of this. I mean, it's literally like, here's a guy who likes to set fire to buildings. He's a, a, an admitted arsonist. But in this latest fi built building fire, we're not going to ask him anything about it. How could they not specifically ask the people who have been named in the press in reporting as having an interest in leaking opinions? So again, this is an epic fail on the part of the Chief Justice John Roberts. Like, you know, whether you believe that Justice Alito leaked the Hobby Lobby opinion in 2014, whether you believe he is the source of the leak in this opinion, we don't know. But the question lurks out there because of this reporting by the New York Times, Jody Cantor and Joe Becker earlier this last year had this whole expose on this coordinated campaign of influence at the Supreme Court with Justice Alito and some of the other conservative justices at its center. And it's attached and associated with the leak and Dobbs. And you don't talk to the justices and you're not forthcoming with the public about whether or not you talk to the justices. I mean, again, just a really silly, unforced error. Well, I mean, unless it wasn't unforced, unless it wasn't unforced. And it sort of does bring to mind the point of this one uh, would think is John Roberts attempt to restore the integrity of the court. And I feel like it's done the opposite. I mean, it's yeah. added another layer of skepticism to whether or not, you know, skepticism about the intentions of the court and how partisan it's become. I mean, not specifying whether or not they've talked to the judges is one thing, and then closing the book on it, seemingly, with Michael Chertoff playing this strange advisory role saying, well, nothing to see here, folks. I'm not a detective, but I have plenty of questions. Well, the Michael Chertoff thing is so interesting to me because Michael Chertoff, as you say, is the former Secretary of Homeland Security. He has some experience in security breaches. He has a consulting firm. And they didn't ask him to conduct an independent investigation. Instead, they just asked him to review this investigation, an investigation which, by their own admission, required some additional expertise because they didn't have it in-house to do it. Why wouldn't you just allow him to do an independent investigation, an external independent investigation, instead of this pro forma report that seems to be like, no notes, nothing to see here? So again, a lot of wasted resources and a lot of wasted capital with the public.